Here's a problem related to electrostatic forces and Coulomb's law. So we have three systems here, and each system contains an electron, labeled by an E, and two protons, each labeled by a P. And the only difference between these systems is that they all have like different arrangements. Like this first one here, system A, has the electron on the left and the two protons on the right. This second one here has the electron in the middle and the protons on either side. And the third one has uh, like two li like a right angle type situation here, where one proton is some distance to the right of the electron, and the other proton is some shorter distance below the electron. And the way we distinguish the distances is that the longer distance is a capital D, and the lower distance is a lowercase d. And system A, this first one up here, kind of implies that big D is twice the length of little d. But as for the problem itself, it doesn't ask us to make any calculations or give a numerical value. Instead, we are asked to rank each system based on the magnitude of the electrostatic force on the electron. So the electron is going to be experiencing an electrostatic force from the protons, and that's what we want to not measure, but that's what we want to compare with each system from each other. The first thing we should do for this problem is remember what the law for charges is. Like charges repel, and opposite charges attract. So this means that charges of the same sign will experience a repulsive force away from each other, while charges that have opposite signs will experience an attractive force towards one another. This is extremely useful for this problem, because for this problem we have protons and electrons. And while protons, by convention, have positive charges, electrons have negative charges. In system A, the electron's on the left, so I'm going to focus on the forces acting on that. So on the electron, it's going to experience two forces, one for each proton. Now for this proton here, uh, remember the electron and the proton have opposite charges, so that means that the electron is going to experience a force towards the right here, in this direction, towards the proton, because remember they have opposite signs, so they're going to be attractive towards one another. It is also experiencing another force to the right because of the other proton that is farther away over here. Both protons are to the right of the electron, so the electron is going to have those two forces directed to the right. Now let's look at situation B. Once again, the electron and the proton will experience uh, attractive forces towards one another. So this electron will have one force directed to the right because of the proton far away at a distance big D, but there will be another force, this time to the left, because there's another proton closer by, and because they have opposite charges, it will experience that attractive force. Finally, let's look at situation C. The electron will again experience attractive forces towards both protons, as we've discussed, one to the right here, and then one force downwards to the other proton. So what I have drawn here on each of the three situations are force vectors, the directions of the force experienced by the electron. This alone kind of tells us what the answer is, because in part A, both of the vectors are pointing in the exact same direction, with no angle between them. This is crucial because two vectors, when added together, are at their highest possible value when they're pointing in the same direction, which means that situation A here must have the greatest electrostatic force on E. Both of the forces that it's experiencing from the other protons are in the same direction, so its force will be greatest there. Conversely, two vectors added together will give you the smallest possible result if the two vectors are pointing in the opposite direction. This means that situation B must have the smallest magnitude of electrostatic force because the two vectors are in the opposite direction. The electron is experiencing forces from the two protons in opposite directions on either side of it.
If the two vectors have any other angle between them, then the number will be somewhere in between. So situation C here must be in the middle of our ranking because these two angles are at a right angle. They're neither parallel nor anti-parallel. They're just somewhere in between. So because of that, we, just from that, we can make our force ranking. Situation A will have the highest magnitude of force. Situation A will have the highest magnitude of force because the vectors are parallel, followed by C, and then followed by B because the vectors are anti-parallel, which means that they'll have their smallest magnitude. So that is our answer to part A of this problem. Now let's look at part B of the problem, which asks about situation C. Now since the vectors are at a right angle from one another, this means that the net force acting on the electron will be somewhere in this direction, where there's a horizontal component of the net force and a vertical component of the net force. Now the problem itself asks whether the angle between the vertical and the net force so but the angle between the force and this distance d here, it asks whether that angle will be less than, equal to, or greater than 45 degrees. Now using what we know about vector addition again, we should know that the only way for this angle to be 45 degrees is if both components, both the horizontal component and the vertical component of the force, are equal to one another because 45 degrees is right in the middle of a 90 degree angle. So we'll know how this angle compares to 45 degrees if we know, just from knowing which force is stronger, whether the, electric, whether the electron is experiencing a stronger force from the proton below it or the proton to the right of it. So to discuss this part of the problem, let's think about Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law states that the force between two charged particles is equal to the Coulomb constant times the product of the two charges divided by the distance between them squared. Now since the, the, the magnitude of the charges themselves aren't changing, the only thing that is changing here are the, the d's, the big D and the little d. So the only thing that's changing is this r, the distance between the particles. You'll notice that the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the particles. This means that as the distance between the particle increases, the force becomes weaker. That's important to know. So if the two particles are closer together, then the force is stronger. So let's take a look at situation C using that knowledge. And we can see that this proton here is a lot closer to the electron than this proton here, since the distance small d is shorter than the distance big D. For that reason, the vertical component of this net force is stronger than the horizontal component of the force on the electron. So because the force is going to be stronger in the vertical direction, then I could redraw this vector as being pointed more in this direction, closer to the bottom proton which means that this angle is very clearly going to be less than 45 degrees. So we can say that the answer to part B is that the angle is going to be less than 45 degrees. And that is the answer to both parts of this problem. I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below if anything, if anything is unclear to you. If you have requests for future videos or future problems for me to do, uh, leave a comment or join my Discord server, which is linked in the description, where I'm always taking requests. In fact, this video that you're watching now was done by request. Um, but yes, I, I hope to help you out in the future, and I hope you have a lovely day. Bye-bye.